An interesting thought experiment is what would happen if interest rates were to rise back to levels seen 20 years ago at the turn of the millennium. Let's discuss that today. What you see in front of you is a chart of how the U.S. federal debt has grown over the past couple of decades. Notice that right around the time of the dot-com boom and the year 2000 scare, the total debt of the U.S., including debt held by the public and intergovernmental debt, was about $6 trillion. Since that time, the debt has increased by about 4.5 times to its current level of $27 trillion. One would think that this would be a big problem. Well, it is a big problem, but it hasn't been a big problem for reasons that I'm about to explain. We all know that the total debt is a big concern for our community, but the level of the debt itself is not a problem for our government rulers so long as it can be rolled over as it comes due. In other words, so long as there is always someone willing to buy the new debt as the old debt matures, the absolute level of the debt by itself will not create a crisis. Will there be a willing buyer of the new debt always? Absolutely. The Federal Reserve stands ready to monetize the new debt to prevent short-term rates from climbing higher than their targets. But now let's discuss why the government debt has been able to increase as much as it has by a factor of 4.5 times without severe consequences, at least not consequences that have manifested so far. Here's a picture of what has happened to the average interest rate that the government has paid on its debt for the past couple of decades. According to the Government Accountability Office, or GAO, the total interest expense on the debt was about 6.5% in the year 2000. The interest rate on the debt has fallen since then to a level of about 1.9%. This has happened for a number of reasons. First, we've been running a huge trade deficit with countries such as China and Japan. As currency has flowed to our creditors to buy goods and services, the natural effect in the currency markets would be to cause the dollar to weaken and the currency of the surplus nations, such as China and Japan, to increase. The creditor nations have done their best to keep their currencies from appreciating by recycling the surplus currency into treasury and instruments that are held in accounts at the Fed. And this demand for treasuries has had a suppressing impact on interest rates. Next, we have the actions of the Fed itself, who in an attempt to maintain strong economic activity has targeted ever lower interest rates over time. They've been buying treasury instruments and inflating their balance sheet. And finally, we have the actions of the treasury itself, who sought to minimize their interest expense by changing the term structure of the debt and either shortening or lengthening the duration of the debt as opportunities arose to do so. All of these actions have resulted in a very significant reduction in the U.S. Treasury's effective interest rate. What was once 6.5% only 20 years ago is now only 1.9%. If interest rates stay low, we might even see this number fall a little bit further as the older debt is rolled into new. But 20 years ago, the interest rate was 3.4 times what it is now. This explains why, despite the fact that the debt level has increased by a factor of 4.5 times, the total amount of interest the Treasury has had to pay on an annual basis has only increased by 44%. The falling interest rate has largely counteracted the rising total debt level. Now, this creates an interesting question. What happens if interest rates climb? Let's discuss that by comparing the total interest expense as compared against tax revenue. I put this pie chart together to show total tax receipts for the U.S. Treasury. I subtracted out the payroll tax because, in theory, and I say in theory for a reason, those revenues are supposed to be earmarked for the Social Security and Medicare programs. It is a fact that the revenues were spent for other reasons up until the point in time was reached a few years ago when there was no longer a Social Security surplus, but that's a topic for another day. We can see that in 2020, the U.S. Treasury had an estimated tax revenue of about $2.2 trillion. The vast majority of this was from individual income taxes. The remainder came from corporate income tax, excise taxes, the estate and gift tax, custom duties, and some other miscellaneous sources. If we compare the current interest expense on the debt of $527 billion to the tax revenue, we can see that the um, debt expense, uh, interest expense only consumes 24% of it. The rest of the tax revenue is free to pay for other expenses, such as military expenses and generous salaries for our congressional rulers, among other things. 
So what would happen if interest rates were to go back to the level that they were 20 years ago? It's a pretty simple calculation. If we multiply the current interest expense of $527 billion by 3.4, we come up with a number close to $1.8 trillion. Now this would be 81% of total tax revenue. Of course, this assumes that the government holds the total debt at current levels and doesn't increase it. I'm doubtful that that's going to happen. But we can see that an interest rate increase back to normal times would guarantee that nearly all of the current tax revenue would be consumed by interest payments. Now, what are the potential remedies? One of them would be for the government to increase taxes. Now, it's certainly possible, but I can't see them going up significantly without causing economic activity to slow, which would tend to counter the increase in tax revenue. One could argue that corporate taxes could be a target. Now, I do see this as a possibility because they used to be a much bigger slice of the pie than they are now. However, I also recognize that a substantial increase would have a pretty big impact on stock valuations. And since so many people are counting on stocks to fund their retirement, a substantial decline would lead to a uh, very big retirement crisis and probably a popular uprising. Now, another remedy would be to substantially reduce government spending. I don't think this is likely to happen either. Again, that's probably a topic for another video. Well, what I think is most likely to happen is for the Federal Reserve and the Treasury to work together to prevent interest rates from increasing. The Federal Reserve can, and probably will, monetize whatever level of debt issuance is necessary to keep interest rates from rising to the point where the interest expense becomes a problem for the U.S. government. Now, mechanically, this can work because all of the interest that the Federal Reserve receives that is in excess of their operating expenses and the 6% dividend that they pay their shareholders goes right back into the Treasury's general fund. By the way, that's part of what the miscellaneous category is here on this pie chart. Now, will this uh, be without consequence? In the short term, yes. In the long term, what will happen is that the money supply will blow up. Gradually, the total amount of money will start to grow. Then the pace of growth will start to quicken. And as this happens, it's likely that prices will start to adjust and will then increase faster than the interest rate available on the bonds. The attractiveness of the bonds will decline until the Federal Reserve is the only buyer, and thus the money supply will start increasing at a faster and faster pace. And the fascinating part of all of this is that the public will have absolutely no comprehension of what is happening and why prices are rising quickly. And our government rulers do like it when there's nobody to point fingers at. Got gold? <laughs>